My intention in this video is to show you how to use your computer to bring in fonts and use them for patterns for applique, embroidery, um, stenciling, whatever you want to use it for. If you have access to a computer and to the internet, then you have access to thousands if not millions of fonts. The first thing I'm going to do is open my browser. It doesn't matter what browser you're using, anyone will do. And you could search for different free font sites. I'm going to save a little bit of time and just take you to one that I like. It's www.dafont.com. When I get to their website, they have lots of different categories, so you can spend time surfing those categories if you want to. They also have the most recently added fonts on their front page, and fonts are added all the time. Um, I know that I want to use the font I'm getting today for applique, so I want something that's fairly smooth. I don't want to have a lot of points that I have to turn. So I'm going to do a search and see what I come up with if I search for a rounded font. So if I scroll down, there are 44 fonts that came up with the rounded search and three pages of them. I can scroll through and I'm looking for something that I'd be willing to applique. This one's not bad. Let's keep looking and see what else is here. And the one that I actually choose, chose for the product project that I'm making today is simply rounded. If you look over here, it says it's free for personal use. If you were wanting to use this for something that was commercial, then you would have to check and see what the licensing is, but I'm just using it for me. So I can click on this font and it's going, it's showing me that there are four different styles of this font. There's just the plain simply rounded. There's the bold simply rounded. There's the italic simply rounded and here's bold and italic. If I keep scrolling down, it's showing me each character that's in this font package and which key on my keyboard will get me to that one. So there are quite a few different options in this font. So I can click download and my computer automatically downloads into my download folder. You need to know where your computer is downloading to. Most likely it's the download folder unless you have changed it. So I can just click here if I want to, but if I wasn't using this immediately, my other option is to go into my folders and I'm going to scroll up until I get to my downloads folder. Click on that and because this was the most recent thing I downloaded, it is on the top. So if I double click on that, it opened my folder. Now this was a zipped folder, which means my files were compressed so that they didn't take up as much space or time to download and to upload. So I need to extract them before I can use them for anything. Somewhere at the top of your screen, there should be something that says extract all. And it depends on which version of Windows you're using on where it will be and exactly what it will look like. So I'm gonna click on extract all and it's telling me that right now it would extract all of these files into my download folder. Well, my download folder is pretty full because I have a lot of downloads in there. So I'm going to put it somewhere else. I'm going to browse and for my purposes today, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. I'll click on that and then say select folder. So when I come back here now, it's telling me it's going to go to the desktop. I'm good with that. So I'm going to click extract. I'm going to close this, but you could find it right here. I'm going to go ahead and close this folder also and my browser. And here on my desktop are the five files. They don't do me any good while they're sitting here. I can double click on them and open them and it will show me what that font looks like. So here's one option. I can click on install from right here. That doesn't always come up, but I'll go ahead and do that for my simply rounded bold click install so it's installing it to the fonts. Another way to do it is to find your font folder which will be in your control panel. So the fastest way is just to click and do a search on my computer I type in font and there it is right there. It says fonts and it's in the control panel. If I double click on that it opens that folder and it's showing every font that is currently loaded on my computer. If the font is in the font folder, 
that means it can be used on the different programs on my computer. I can use it in Microsoft Word, I can use it in Excel, I can use it in my Adobe like Photoshop, I can use it in Electric Quilt, I can use it in my embroidery software. So I could fill this folder really full. If you do that, what it's going to do is slow down your applications when you open them up and it's loading. So if I have a font that I'm only going to use one time, I will go ahead and load it into this folder. But when I'm finished, I can delete it from this folder or I could move it to a different folder so it's not there being loaded in every program. So I did one that was install. So I can click on the, the font on my desktop, drag it over and drop it into the folder. It installs it that way as well. I'm going to just select all of them and two of them are already in here. So I'm going to click and drag and no, I don't want to install it again and no. So it's going to finish installing all of them. Now remember it was called Simply Rounded. So if I scroll down there it is right there the stack of four different styles of that font so now it's usable in any application that I open so I can go ahead and close my font folder and while I'm here I might as well delete these off my desktop they don't do me any good here and I have a copy in my font folder so I'm going to click delete now I can use it in whatever program I want and for patterns I usually just use my word processing program you go open word and open a new document and I'm going to view it at 100% so I can see what this really looks like when I'm working on it. So now I can scroll all the way down to Simply Rounded. It's in my list alphabetical and I want you to notice I'm using Microsoft Word 2013. The newer versions, it shows what your font looks like. If you have a really, really old version, then it may not show what it looks like but I don't have to type it and keep changing it to get an idea of what it looks like so I can scroll down and say simply rounded click on that now I'm going to just use my name for this so I'm going to type it in well that's way too small to applicate so I can highlight it and my drop down menu my biggest size is 72 that's still kind of small to applicate now just because my drop down menu only goes to 72 does not mean that that is as high as I can go. I can type in my own value. And now it's a little bit big unless I was turning this sideways. Let's drop it down to 150. Whoops, I don't need to scroll. Just type it in and hit enter. That's okay. That'll work. I do want to point out that you can go a lot bigger to see what the biggest is you can go. Type in a really large number. Let's go 5,000. Well, it won't go that big. It brings a pop-up message that says it has to be a number between 1 and 1,638. So 1,638 is going to be a pretty big letter. Okay. I could use this as a pattern now just as it is, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to trace when I have... A solid shape in there so I want to convert this to an outline to do that I have the text highlighted that I want to convert I'm going to right click on it go down to where it says font and then in this pop-up box there's a little box down here that says text effects I'm going to click on that and I get this pop-up menu and I have text fill so if I click on that I can choose no fill which is what I want to do now before I move on let's look at text outline well right now there's no outline either which would mean I wouldn't have any letters so let's go ahead and make it a solid line and I can change what color that outline is going to be by clicking on the paint bucket and I'm going to click on black and then I'm going to say I can also adjust the width of my line if I want to I'm gonna leave it as is say OK and OK. So now I have an outline pattern. So I can just print this out and I can trace my templates for my applique or I can flip it over on a light table and work from the reverse side if I want to do fused applique. There is a way to actually reverse this in Microsoft Word. To do that I have to have a text box. 
So I'm going to say insert text box. I just want a simple one and I have the text in there. I don't really care what it says. I'm going to highlight my name and I'm going to copy it so I could either go up and do the copy and paste over here, copy and then paste, or I can use keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to go control C, which is copy. And then I'm going to highlight the information in that text box, say control V, which is paste. So my text box is not sized very well for my name. So I can just drag it out till my name fits in there. Okay, so, so to get a mirror image, I'm going to double click on the outline of my text box, which brings me over to my formatting tab. I'm going to click on text effects, and I'm going to go to 3D rotation, and then all the way at the bottom, it says 3D rotation options. So I get a new window that opens up, and down here I have options. I have an X rotation, and if you look here at the arrows, that means it's going to be turning it either right or left. Y rotations are going to be up and down, and I'm not sure what the Z rotation does. It looks like it's turning it around a point. I haven't tried it. I want the X rotation, so I can click on the up and down buttons, or I can type in a value. So as I click, it rotates it or I can highlight it and just say I want 180 degrees because I want it as a mirror image. So now I can click off of that and it's there. I can print that and I have my mirror image so I don't have to reverse it on my light box. While I'm in Microsoft Word, I thought I'd show you one more fun thing you can do with text. If you were typing out a phrase and you wanted to use it for embroidery or you wanted to use it for a stencil, you could do your spacing and your baseline different in Microsoft Word. So I'm going to go back to my home tab, which is where my fonts are. And I know that I have one that's Christmas snowflakes and I've already used it, but I want to show you another way to get to it. I don't have to scroll through it if I know the name. I can just start typing the name and when it pops up, hit enter. Whoops, I lost it. Let's go back and get it. And um, it's been hot and the smoke has been blowing here from the west coast, so snow starting to sound not too bad. I type, let it snow. Okay, that's way too small. And I can tell you that it's probably still going to be way too small, even if I go to 72. Let's try it at, well, let's see what 200 looks like. Well, it's too long. So 175, still too much. I want it on one line, so that's why 50. Okay, let's just try 100. For... All right, so that looks good, but I could play with it and do more. So I'm gonna just delete this, and I'm going to go to the Insert tab. And if you go over here, there's a word art, and it's an A that's tipped kind of diagonal on a side. If I click on that, it doesn't really matter what letter I choose right now. I'm going to just go ahead and do it as an outline. It switched my font back to a different one, to my default on my computer. I'm going to do my drop-down menu, get my Christmas one, and then I'm going to type whatever I want in this box that it opened. So let it snow. That's too small. We already saw that earlier, so let's change it to 20. Whoops, don't want that. Now I gotta highlight it first, sorry. Let's go. Don't need to do that. 120. All right. Okay, that looks good. It's just an outline, but we can do more. Let's double click on this. And it brings me back over to my format menu. And this one that has the outlined A where it says text effects, let's click on that, go all the way to the bottom and go to the ABC transform. So if I wanted to, this to look like it was on like a hill, I can do that. Uh, this is just fun to play with. I could put it in a circle, although that it's not long enough to finish it. I can, now it looks like the snow's blowing. 
I can make it bigger on one end and smaller on the other. So you can play with it to get whatever look you want. And if you're not happy with how it comes out, you can actually skew this by dragging your your box. So see how it's stretching it in the top? So it's making my letters taller. So there's all kinds of things you can play with in here. So you could spend a few hours playing around and have a lot of fun and make up all your own patterns.